In today's Gibbs Cam video, we're going to show you two parts. I've been asked to do a little bit more on uh, advanced machining, and in this case, we're going to show you uh, five axis machining, swarf cutting. That seems to be one of the most common things to do in five axis simultaneous would be swarf milling. As you can see here, I have a part that we call the clover leaf. So what we want to show you is uh, some volume mill solids. And uh, everyone who is on maintenance will now get volume mill solids for free. So let's get started. First I have my tools here, inch and a half drill, three quarter inch rough end mill, three quarter inch finish end mill, and a half inch ball end mill for deburring. So let's go through these tool paths here. I'm going to bring the first tool path here. And we're going to do a combination uh, drill and volume mill as these will work together. So the first thing I want to do, of course, uh, drill a hole through the part here as a starting point. And I'll have my drill go uh, right in the middle. And if you combine it with a volume mill solids, let me bring this up here. Normally volume mill will give you a helix tool path or a ramp if you don't have a hole in it already. But if you combine it with a drilling process and double do a multiple process here, uh, volume mill will automatically start in the middle. So like I mentioned, everybody has volume mill solids now. So here we're using volume mill solids and not wire frame. So I just select my depth, my feeds and speeds, leaving a little bit of stock on there. And this is the tool path you're gonna get for the volume mill. And basically it's just going to cut where it can. So it's not going to uh, go clear out to the edges here as you can see when we run the tool path here. So the next tool path I want to do is going to be the swarf milling. So in swarf milling it's under the options here tab, uh, five axis uh, milling. Let me bring it over here. 5-axis milling, so you can see on the drop-down menu I have Swarf Milling. And go to the, of course I'm on the XY plane. Click on the Swarf Milling tab and the first thing it asks you is wall surfaces. So I selected the uh, inside wall. Just click on the wall in here and it goes clear around on this particular part. Now if it didn't, you could always choose down here, select tangent faces, and it will go clear around everything that's tangent. So I have that selected here. I don't have a bottom rail stock remaining. I'm telling it to leave 10,000 stock. I want to go one way. I want to climb mill, and I'm going to do multiple passes. So check this box, click on multiple passes. And I, and I want to do two extra passes at quarter inch spacing. And I'm going to do five axis milling. I just leave the default here, maximum angle step uh, three degrees. And I'm going to click on follow ISO direction. And since it wanted to start when I originally did this, wanted to start in the corner there, I didn't like that starting point. There's too many uh, uh, chances of gouging there so I selected start point and it asked you where do you want to start and I clicked right on here and it gave me the position here for my start point so that's where I'm starting now I want to bring the tool also a little bit down uh, below the surface so I'm not always cutting at the tip of the tool so I told it to go a negative eighth of an inch on the axial shift on there uh, just give it a cut tolerance there you can of course change this to whatever you like to do. Now as far as the link, I'm going to use a lead in, lead out on the initial approach and every other, um, if I go into the links between passes, I could also do uh, retract to uh, retract to rapid distance or clearance area, whatever you would like to do depending on how you want to enter and exit. And I'm going to do Lead, use lead in and use lead out again on that. So I'll just click on redo that and you can see we have a toolpath pretty quick there. So on the 
fourth operation, basically I'm going to do the same thing other than I'm just going to take a finish pass on there. And then as far as the deburring goes, let me bring that up. That's also in the five axis. And that's under the general tab and surface paths. And if you click the drop down menu, you will see deburring there. And tool axis, five axis, and I want to the tool basically to be normal to the contour because we have plenty of room for that. And I'm going to click on user defined. Now even though this says part surfaces, normally when you click it you have to select the whole body there. So just keep that in mind otherwise you might not get the uh, do it or redo button up here. And I have a constant depth of 30 thou. Um, trim doesn't matter here. There's really no inside corners on there. Uh, everything you can give it an overlap if you like and a cut tolerance there so if you go to the cut part render let's slow it down a little bit you can see the tool the drill is going to plunge in there let me slow it down it's a little too fast the drill is going to go in there and you see that the volume mill automatically went into the center of the hole so we're going to go out as far as we can with a volume mill. Again, I mentioned this is volume mill solids, not wire frame. So everybody has volume mill solids. If you have any kind of solids in your uh, Gibbs licenses, you will have volume mill solids included at no charge in 2022. We'll speed it up just a little bit here. The nice thing about volume mill solids is it's going to look, of course, at the solid, and you're going to see it can't get into the corners all the way since this is uh, swarfed and tilting, So, but it'll get in, in as far as it can. And you can see it's going to leave that area there because it can't tilt. And then we're going to do the simultaneous five axis milling. This is the first rough pass. And then we're going to do the second rough pass. And then, of course, this is going to be the final pass. Then the last tool is going to be the deburr. So a very nice toolpath on here. Let's show you what it looks like in uh, machine sim. So we have our five axis machine here. In this case, it's a DMU 50, but this would be the same for any five axis machine, any brand that you have. We'll rewind, play again. There's our plunge hole. There's our volume mill toolpath. Speed it up just a little bit. And there's our simultaneous. We'll slow it down. There's our first roughing pass. Second roughing pass. And then, of course, the final cut. And then, of course, the deburr. And there's our finished part. So not very hard to uh, program 5-axis simultaneous with swarf milling. That's it for this part. We'll bring up the... This was doing uh, inner swarfing. The next part we're going to do is outside swarfing, so we'll show you that one next. So here is our next part. I guess you could call it a dog bone, I guess, kind of looking like part. So this, tool, this time we're using uh, tool number three. We're going to use a half inch uh, 
rough end mill to rough it out. Um, and then for the volume mill, then we're going to tool number two, which is the three quarter inch end mill for roughing. And then uh, tool two again, uh, three quarter inch end mill for finishing. And then we're going to, of course, uh, take tool number four, a ball end mill and deburr. So again, let's bring up the volume mill. This time we just have volume mill by itself because there's no drilling needed on here. So let me bring up, uh, I changed my origin here, so let's just change that a little bit on the fly. Alt click the top surface. And we want to put a little bit of clearance in there. I'm going to put a quarter inch there. So we know our top surface is zero. I'm going to put a quarter inch again. And as far as our depth goes, I know it's one inch, so I'm just going to tilt it a little bit. Hold the Alt key down, click on the bottom there. You can see it's minus one inch. I want to go a little bit past that. I'm going to say minus 1.2. And we'll actually do this in one pass. So I'll just put a desired two inch step and it'll round it off and make it one pass on here. Now again, we're leaving some stock on here. Uh, this is a solid, so we're gonna leave surface stock about 50 thou on here. So then we'll click on redo and see the tool path. There's our tool path for the volume mill. So the next thing I wanna do, bring up Tool number two, which is our three quarter inch uh, end mill. And again, we're gonna do swarf cutting. Of course, put in your feeds and speeds. And pick your wall surfaces. In this case, I picked the wall around the outside there. No bottom rail, doing five axis again. We're gonna follow the surface ISO direction. And I'm going to do multiple passes again. So click that two passes, about 3 sixteenths each pass. I want to go one way and I want to climb. You can have your choice there, conventional climb, one way, zigzag, helical motion. You have a lot of choices there. And again, I'm going to axial shift, so I'm going to bring the tool about 200 thou below the surface there. And of course, you can give it your uh, cut tolerance and if you want to do some number of finished passes, you can do that as well. Then the third operation, basically the same thing, tool number two, but we're just going to do uh, everything here about the same, except we're not doing multiple passes. Same shift, we're going to do a no stock, so this is just a finish pass. And again, the deburr pass, that's under surface paths, deburring. Normally I choose user define and it says part surfaces and again normally you have to choose the whole solid so not just the surface otherwise you might not get the uh, do it or redo button here and then user define edges select the edge you want to deburr and then the constant depth or constant width you can choose either one on the deburring trim we don't care on here, no inner corners on here, so we're all good there. So let's do first opsim. And here we have our rough stock. And again, I'm gonna use volume mill. No need to use the five axis for roughing when volume mill does an excellent job in roughing out our parts. And here's our first five axis roughing pass. And then our finished pass, of course, in a different color. And then we have the deburring. So nice tool pass. So if we run machine sim, and here we have our volume mill tool path. Taking most of the material out.
then our first roughing pass. Second roughing pass. Final finish pass. And of course, our deburr pass. So that's kind of our uh, first session on uh, swarf milling. Fairly easy to do. And we'll show you some more later down the road here, but this will give you an idea on how to do swarf milling, at least get you started on there on uh, swarf milling and Gibbs Cam. Thank you for watching.